So here we're going to learn how to integrate using substitution. Substitution is a great tool to help us um, simplify complex integrals. This form of substitution is called u substitution. u is usually the variable we, we substitute in order to make these problems easier. So let's zoom in here on example one. We have to integrate that. Now, you might be thinking that the easiest way to do this would be to distribute out the x squared plus 5 squared, maybe distribute this 2x in so you have it in a whole bunch of pieces, and then take the integral of each of those pieces. You could very well do that, but that takes a lot of time, a lot of algebra, and you might make a little mistake in there because there's a lot involved. Do you see a pattern, though? Do you see any other way we could possibly find the integral? Think about this. Remember, integration is just the opposite of differentiation. So if we're trying to anti-differentiate this, can we come up with a function that's going to give us this as the derivative? Well, one thing you may notice, you may notice that if I take this part inside the brackets, let's just call that u, you might notice that this piece over here, the 2x piece, is u prime. It's the derivative of u. Does this trigger any sort of derivative rule? You might have realized that this is actually the chain rule, right? Because the chain rule tells us if we have a function, f and inside, we'll call the inside function u, and we want to find the derivative of it, what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of f prime at u, and then we're going to multiply it by the derivative of u, the derivative of the inside function. Right? That's essentially what our chain rule says. So we sort of have that pattern here because we have a function here in terms of some variable u, and then we have the derivative of it after. So really what we have here is we have something that the chain rule has been applied to it. So how can we undo this chain rule? Well, maybe you're just thinking backwards, right? If we, if we did this backwards, what would we end up with here in the exponent? We'd end up with something like this, x squared plus 5 to the power of 3, right? So, and then we know we have to have plus c at the end because it's an indefinite integral. But let's try now to take the derivative of this thing. What would the derivative look like? Well, we'd bring the 3 down, we'd lower it to a power of 2, and then we multiply by 2x. So actually, it looks very close to this thing already, but what's missing? Well, we'd have to bring that 3 down, right? So in order to get rid of that 3, to bring that 3 down, why don't we divide the whole thing by 3 as well? If we do that, realize if we do that, we're gonna, now let's try to take the derivative. Um, and just I'm going to do this part off to the side. Just take the derivative of this. Um, I'm going to do it in another color. So the derivative of this is going to be 3x squared plus 5 to the 2 over 3 times the derivative of the inside, 2x. Did we get it? Did we achieve this? Yeah, we did. Those twos, those threes obviously just cancel out. And we got it. So there you go. That would be the derivative, sorry, that would be the integral of this function according to the inverse or backwards, I should say, chain rule. So that's it. Now, the questions aren't always going to be this simple and this clear cut. Let's look at the next one. So this is another place where I actually want you to pause the video, try it yourself, see if you can come up with the correct answer. Okay? When you unpause it, you will see the solution. Okay, so here's my solution. I just did this by, again, thinking about the reverse chain rule. So um, basically, I know that this is the thing that's going to be in that original equation with the power of 3. The power is going to go up there. So we don't see a 3 out in front, so we obviously have to divide by 3 here to get rid of that 3, right? And then we have to multiply this thing in the derivative. We have to multiply this thing by the derivative of what's inside, by 2x, right? But again, we don't have that 2 in our, um, in our integral. So we have to also divide by 2 to cancel it out. We can very quickly go backwards and take the derivative of this to see what it would give us, just to make sure that we're right. And that's a good practice to get into, actually. So 3x squared minus 10 squared times the derivative of what's inside times 2x um, all over 3 times 2. I'm just going to leave it as 3 times 2. And you'll notice that 3 cancels out, that 2 cancels out, and we're left with 
x times x squared minus 10, all squared. There we go. So essentially, we're correct about our, our uh, integral. Notice how I could have simplified this, obviously, to a 6. I just wanted to keep it clear what I was doing. So that's well and good. We can do that. We can do that actually for a lot of these questions. But what happens if they get a lot more complicated? Then we actually have to make a substitution. Because notice how we haven't actually made a substitution yet in these equations. Let's try to do that here, though. How can we take, make a substitution here to make it simpler? Well, we know the thing underneath the square root is probably a good bet, right? So let's call that u. 5x plus 3. Okay? Easy. So when we rewrite our integral, it's going to be root u dx. Now, we have a problem here because we're taking the integral of root u with respect to x. x is inside this u, but this would be a lot easier if this dx was a du instead. So how can we find a du? I'm going to give you a hint. Look at this right here. Can we find a du from there? We can, actually. What happens if we take the derivative of that thing? We call that du by dx. And what is that going to be in this case? 5. Just the derivative of that thing, right? Now, this is where the magic really happens. In order to plug in something for that dx, we can rearrange this. And it's sort of like we're treating this like a fraction. Um, in actuality, it can't be exactly treated like a fraction, but this is a case where you can. So if I was to say isolate for d dx in this equation, right, I can just rearrange it. So I would maybe make du equals 5 dx, or I could rearrange it one more time, du times 1 fifth equals dx. Notice how I didn't put du over 5 um, when I brought the 5 to the other side, or divided by 5. Um, that's just because, again, du is not a fraction. du over dx is not a fraction. But we now know that du is just 1 over 5. So going back to my problem, let me do that in blue. Going back to my problem, I can actually just substitute in the dx for 1 fifth du. Now, we also know a constant can be pulled out of that integral, right? So I can actually just bring the 1 fifth out there, the integral of u, du. So now we have something that's a lot easier to simplify. Um, that's going to be 1 fifth. The integral of the square root of re u, remember u is, uh, the square root of u is just, is just um, u to the power of 1 half. So when we take the integral of it, we're essentially doing... Um, u, and then we raise it by 1, so to the 3 halves, divided by that 3 halves. Right? And that's it. Now we can simplify this. Let's move that fraction to the top. Um, so essentially what we're going to get is, um, I think that 2 is going to go on top, so 2u to the 3 halves over 5 times 3, if we flip that fraction and multiply, uh, over 15. There we go. Are we done? No, we actually need that plus c. This is an indefinite integral. I actually should have put that plus c in this, this one as well. So you actually notice we can, we can also, um, we don't want the u. The u wasn't in the original equation. So we can get rid of that u as well by re-plugging in that u into this equation. Remember, u was just 5x plus 3. So we can plug that back in. I'm just going to squeeze this in underneath. I know we're getting a little bit crowded here. That's OK. Um, 2. 5x plus 3 to the power of 3 halves over 15 plus c. There we go, right? That is the integral of our original function. Now, some of you may have been able to figure out what this integral was without doing all the substitution parts, but it will get more complicated, so you do have to know how to do this because um, it's going to make things a lot simpler at the end of the day. Okay, so here's another case where I really want you to give this a shot yourself. Pause the video here, see if you can figure it out using that u substitution method that we just did. When you unpause the video, a complete solution will be revealed. Okay, so here we go. The substitution that I made is u equals 7x, right? That's sort of the obvious thing to plug in. 
Um, when you do that, take the derivative, du by dx gives you seven. And then rearranging for dx basically gives us that dx is equal to one seventh du. So then I plugged it back into the equation. Notice how I moved the seventh outside of the integral right away. I just did that right off the bat. Um, and then I took the integral. The integral of cos u is just gonna be sine, right? Because the derivative of sine is cos. So when we do that, it just gives us this. And then um, I re-plugged in u as seven x, and there we go, that's the answer. So the question down here, Will u substitution always work? And what should you look for to see if it will work? Essentially, the answer to the first part is no, it won't always work. It'll work sometimes. Sometimes you'll try it, and just things won't get easier. Um, and that's when you sort of stop and try something else, or try to make a different substitution. But the things you should look for when, um, when seeing if it's going to apply, essentially look for what looks like the chain rule has been applied to it. Because really what u substitution is, it's the inverse of the chain rule. It's the integration version of the chain rule. So look for things like this, where you have a function f of some u times u prime, right? Look for something where it's the function, a function within a function, and then times the derivative of that function at the end. That's sort of what you're looking for. Okay, so here's another case. This one looks a little bit more complicated. Um, can we apply u substitution to it? It might not be obvious that the chain rule has been applied to this because um, the derivative of 2x minus 1 is just 2, right? So we have this other x up here. So it looks a little bit silly. Is substitution going to work? Well, we have this ugly part that we don't want to integrate. So let's just try it. Let's see if it works. Sometimes with integration, you sort of just got to use a little bit of trial and error to try to figure out what to do. And you'll get better as time goes by at spotting what you need to make the substitution for. So the ugly part here is the square root of 2x minus 1. So I'm actually just going to make you the whole square root of 2x minus 1. We could have just done 2x minus 1, just the inner part. but I, that whole thing is ugly. I don't like it. Let's try. So one thing you might be tempted to do is just take the derivative du by dx right here, but that's going to give us something ugly too. Why don't we just eliminate the problem by squaring both sides? That is a much, much nicer thing to deal with, right? I think so. So we know how to take the derivative of this thing, right? We know how to take the derivative with respect to x of this thing. It is going to be a little bit of implicit differentiation, but we can handle that, right? So that's essentially what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. So it's going to give me 2u. And then because the, diff uh, the derivative is in terms of x, we have to use the chain rule, du by dx, right? Equals, and then the derivative of the right side is just going to be 2, right? So again here, so we have a much simpler derivative here than if we had just taken the derivative of this using the chain rule. So now, again, we want to substitute in the dx, right? So let's solve for dx. These twos are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with a 1 on this side, right? And what we're essentially going to get is that dx equals u du. Oh my gosh, that is much simpler than this mess up here. So we have to plug that in to this, this thing on the, uh, the actual question, right? So we have to plug in, we can plug in this as u, right? We can plug in dx as u du. What can we plug in for x? Well, x, pretty straightforward. Um, we can just isolate for x in this expression, right? So just sort of going off here, x is going to equal u squared plus 1 over 2. Right, if we just do a little bit of rearranging. Um, so we can plug that in as well. So let's start by plugging all that stuff into this expression. So we have the integral of x is going to be replaced by um, u squared plus 1 over 2. And then this whole thing is divided by u, right, because 2x minus 1, the root of 2x minus 1 is just u. And then we multiply at the end by dx, which is u du. So notice what's going to happen right off the bat is these u's are going to cancel out. That is beautiful. That's what you want to happen when you use u substitution. You want those u's to go away 
um, when you start plugging stuff in. It's going to make stuff a lot easier. So what we're left with is this integral of u squared plus 1 over 2 du. Okay, we've already simplified that a lot. Can we simplify it even more? Well, this divided by 2 here, that's really like saying multiplied by 1 half. So that's another thing we can pull outside of the integral. There we go. Even simpler. We can easily integrate that now, right? One thing, though, one thing that I've been missing. What type of integral is this? It's a definite integral, right? We have the limits of integration are 1 and 5. So that means we're looking essentially for the area below the graph of um, between 1 and 5. So the problem is I haven't been putting the limits of integration here. I left that out on purpose because that's another thing that we have to think about. Remember, this x, sorry, this 5 and this 1 are both in terms of x, our original variable, right? So we actually have to make substitutions for those as well, similar to how we had to do for limits when we made a substitution for a limit. So off to the side, I'm just going to figure this out. When x equals 5, what does u equal? Well, we can just plug that in. u equals the square root of 2x minus 1, so 9. So u equals 3, basically, when x equals 5. When x equals... 1, u is going to equal 2 times 1 minus 1, which is the square root of 1, which is just 1. So when x equals 5, u equals 3. When x equals 1, uh, u equals 1. So we can just substitute those in as our limits of integration between 1 and 3, between 1 and 3. And we should do this all the way up because we should have really done it at the beginning, but I just didn't want to overwhelm you with, uh, overwhelm you with a million substitutions at once. So now we can calculate this definite integral between 1 and 3. So let's do that. So 1 half, um, oh, let's just take the integral, right? So the integral of u squared is going to be u cubed over 3. And the integral of 1 is just going to be u, right? And that's between 1 and 3. So all we have to do now is evaluate this at 3, evaluate at 1, and we're good to go, right? 1 half, um, so u cubed over 3 is going to be like 27 over 3 plus 3 minus, if we evaluate it at 1, that's going to be 1 over 3 plus 1, right? When we simplify that whole thing, we end up getting 16 over 3. And that's our answer. That's the area between the area of this between 1 and 3, right? Or the area of this between 1 and 5. We successfully used our substitution to solve this. Note how we didn't have to plug in x again here for our u's because we made the substitution, right? You could have you could have plugged in x back for the u's and then changed this 1 and this 3 back into the x values of 1 and 5. But that's a lot more work. We don't have to do that when we're doing definite integrals. Because remember, we're just looking for a numerical answer, which is 16 over 3. So notice how this question in your textbook is actually a repeat from the previous page. That's an error in your um, handouts. I'm going to change that question to this one. I like this question. So the integral between 0, uh, zero and 1 of x squared times the square root of 1 minus x dx. OK? This is the new question um, example. What is it? 2b. So I really want you to give this one a try. Try using the same, um, same method as the previous question. Um, it will become a lot easier when we um, when you take the when you make this whole thing the substitution for the square root of one minus x as opposed to just doing the inside part because then you don't have to worry about that square root that square root is essentially going to disappear okay so pause the video here try it yourself and then you can unpause to see the solution so here's most of the solution I made the substitution u equals the square root of one minus x so 
taking the derivative implicitly and solving for dx gave me that dx is equal to negative 2u du. x, when we solve for that, is equal to, uh, just equal to 1 minus u squared. So after we've made all our substitutions, oh, and then also, this is interesting, when x equals 1, u equals 0. And when x equals 0, u equals 1. So notice here how I was very careful because when x equals 1, so the top limit, that became 0. The bottom limit became 1. You got to be careful to put them in the right spots. The top one has to stay as the top one. The bottom one has to stay as the bottom one. Even though it looks like this number is smaller than this number, and it is, you still have to keep it that way. So the top limit has to stay as the top limit. The bottom limit has to stay as the bottom limit. So then you get this expression once you've simplified. You can basically, I skipped a whole bunch of steps here. You can distribute that out and simplify, and then you get this trinomial right here. And then you take the integral of that, because it's just essentially a polynomial. The integral of that looks like this, between 0 and 1. Now, essentially what you need to do, this is again where you have to be careful, you have to do the function at 0 minus the function at 1. Right? You can't get those signs mixed up. You can't do 1 here and 0 here. You have to do this one first minus this one because that's essentially what our fundamental theorem of calculus says. So even though these two numbers, like even though this number is um, to the left of this number, you still got to do it because uh, just trust the math that the math is going to work. The answer, once you actually do those two things, should be 16 over 105. If you had flipped these around, you would have got the negative answer of that because you're integrating essentially the wrong way. Um, you're, you're, yeah, you're integrating in, in the wrong direction, which is the wrong answer. So you got to be careful about that. So try this yourself. See if you come up with that as your answer.